Greetings, ladies and Mandeljets, and welcome to this latest episode of uh, Tales, Tales from, from Outer from space. Out space. space, where I take a space-related story from around the internet and read it out loud for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below. Please don't forget to do the usual YouTube gumph, because if you don't, the nanite swarms will steal your other sock. But more importantly, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I'd quickly like to thank the following Tier 5 patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. Data Magnet and Bob the Dragon. Thank you very much. Story number one. The Black Friar. Written by Osso Alosso. In my time, it was seen as a dangerous in many parts of the unity to befriend a Terran. They had a knack for judging the sincerity of each other, but they were new to us and we didn't share that same insight. It had been fifty Terran years since they came here, and even still, it was a gamble for any other species to take a Terran as a companion. I took a gamble and was rewarded by finding an honest one. I gained a familiarization with Terrans that many species wanted, but never would take the risk to have. I saw the better parts of their species by being exposed to the worst parts of who they were. Terrans can deal death without so much as a second thought, but that brutality juxtaposed their need for justice and the redemption of evil. Terrans are a dichotomous species. Before the Discord War, Terrans had few interplanetary diplomats and even fewer governing bodies. They were a new species in the galactic reality and were struggling to find their place. This struggle allowed a lot of leeway for the less desirable elements of their people to manifest. Raiders, pirates, deceitful souls who exacted usury, and are more slavers than the Unity had seen since its founding. They operated in the shadows, just outside the reach of the Unity fleets. Despite the best efforts of their fledgling governments to distance themselves from the rogue factions and change opinion, Terrans were widely detested for the visible wounds they left on Unity colonies. What Unity citizens didn't see was the actual civil opposition from Terrans themselves against these actions. Before any declaration, before the Terran Abolitionist Treaty, Terran groups bombed slaver colonies and glassed slaver moons. They constantly freed slaves and gave them sanctuary on their own worlds until they could repatriate them to their home and go back to. And if there was nowhere for them to go, the Terrans integrated them into their own societies and homes. It was on the ship of one of these opposition groups that I met my Terran friend. I was asked by the Unity Council if I would join a Terran crew to root out slavers as a test for future larger fleets. I happily agreed. I was not prepared for the peculiarity of this joint venture. I arrived at the ship, the Donna Spreya Decatorum, and discovered that it was largely staffed by Terran religious order who were referred to by the civilian members as the Black Friars. This group was under a direct authority of some quasi-religious government ruled by a man in a very pointy head covering. All the other Terran government's heads had some kind of treaty with this, uh, Vatican. I never grasped the full nature of how this worked. But from the best I could tell, it was a Terran tradition that they all honored. Their captain was named Raul Arasto Lacento, and was hard for many species to pronounce his name and especially hard for me, as my tongue was a quarter the size of a Terran's, and so I called him Rara. He was an unassuming man, and his large black robes concealing his well-used blaster. Despite such an average Terran appearance, in comparison to his fellow friars, he was anything but. They had soft skin and soft bodies. They looked like scholars and priests, but Rara was more muscular than the rest. He kept his head fur cropped close to his skin, and his face bore sharp angles and scars. His arms were larger and more muscled, and he had most peculiar large calluses between his thumb and his first finger, through which he constantly moved a large string of beads. Others on the ship who were part of his order wore beads around their waist, under their robes or on their arms, and used them to pray the same prayers. But Rara's set seemed longer, and his prayers were always in silence while he worked the beads through his fingers. 
I later learned that the Terran religious tradition was not as generational as it was in unity. Rara did not come from a religious family, but converted shortly before he took his oath to the friars. I made my rounds and acquainted myself with the ship and prepared for the day as we were going to board a slaver ship that Rara had been tracking. My introduction to the Terran battle was quick. Rara was brutally calculating in his attacks on slavers. He had a foresight about their actions that was hard to believe. He was always one step ahead, minimizing damage and loss, and always there to help the slaves after. It was fascinating. The Terran ability to compartmentalize their minds is now well known, but then it was still one of those new fascinating things that kept us wondering what else that they could do. These Terrans can exist as if there are multiple people expressed in a single body. Even the act of manually learning a new language can manifest a whole new person in them, different in tone, taste, and manner than when speaking in their native tongue. Rara was a living example of this. He had a penchant for alien tongues and was quick to pick them up and emulate the mannerisms. It gave him an advantage when dealing with the slaves and the trauma that they'd been through. His compassion and gentleness was in stark opposition to his capability for efficient violence. While attacking slavers, he wore death like a cloak, and he was far too comfortable with the warmth of that cloak than a holy man should ever be. And always, after eradicating the slavers, in seconds, he would change, and the soft light of hope and peace would follow him while freeing slaves. They would walk onto the Ordinus, passing the boxes of slaver tokens from previously freed slaves. It was one of the unwritten rules of slavers that Terrans picked up on, and it persisted even when slaves changed hands. They were always forced to wear the token of their first enslaver, a kind of tribute to their first master. Every time we freed captives, they would rip that token from their neck, wrist, or ankle, wherever their enslaver made them wear it. Small pieces of metal, bones from previous slaves, coins or bolts from ships, a myriad of items all representing their loss of individual freedom. We continued on like this for months. Identify, kill, set free and transport to Terran worlds. While the work was noble, it was hard to stay focused when the sheer number of slaves we were seeing. The last slaver ship we boarded was set to meet another for transfer of slaves. We waited just outside the meeting point, and then jumped into and out of FTL on top of the slaver ship and fired to disabled their engines. We blew through the airlock with blasters at the ready. There was silence and darkness to meet us on the other side. Rara had no problem navigating before the lights kicked back on. I thought it strange that he had such an unsettling knack of getting around these ships. We rounded a corner and blast of fire struck the bulkhead next to my face. Rara leapt forward and shot down the slaver who'd fired the shot. He lingered over the body and I went forward clearing the ship with some of the other Adonis crew behind me. We made our way to the slave hold and disengaged the locks. We were sorting them and getting their information as we guided them back to the Adonis. Rara was still standing there over the dead slaver. Then I heard a scream from a young Bulgarian. She was running straight at Rara. She slammed into his chest and tried grabbing his blaster. I leapt on her and pulled her off of him as he stood up. I spun her around and I told her that it was going to be okay. We were here to help. She looked at me with so much confusion. Then I heard a small snap from her wrist and looked down to see Rara pulling a small wooden bead that had been tied around her hand. He unlatched his prayer beads and dropped it onto the loop. It matched the others perfectly. He looked back at me as his eyes began to leak, and it was then that I finally understood why he always seemed to step ahead, why he could anticipate slaver actions, why he seemed to know these ships, and why he was so comfortable with death. My Terran companion had been a slaver. Today, Terrans are honored for their actions during the Discord War. Their character was never questioned after that. I honor them for that too. But before the war, before they sacrificed a billion of their own lives to protect ten billion of ours, before we saw the best of everything they can be, in the midst of the worst, there was a former slaver 
praying in silence, redeeming himself one bead at a time. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment, just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.